More than 26 million Americans have filed for unemployment just over the last five weeks. The unprecedented surge in jobless claims have created a backlog of applications, and that means that millions are still waiting for their check to arrive. They don't even know when or if it will arrive. For more of this, Francis Stacy is a market analyst and director of portfolio strategy at Optimal Capital and joins me now. So Francis, tell me, why are we seeing so many problems with unemployment checks? Uh, none of the states were, were, were prepared for this volume. I mean, particularly in Florida, where I am at the moment, uh, the infrastructure, the technological infrastructure to uh, process these claims has been breaking down. And of course, you have you know, less employees, less employees at work. And so that part of the operation has been slowed at the same time when the system is just being completely overwhelmed. So um, there's no telling and, and there's a lot of bickering back and forth about who should have spent more money on the infrastructure before this sort of thing hit. I think it's kind of a wake up call to get these state systems in place so that if something like this were to, goodness forbid, ever happen again, then you can handle that kind of volume of unemployment claims. But it's just never occurred before, so no one was prepared for it. So if millions of these newly unemployed folks can't get these checks, can't get any sort of financial help, how can they pay rent? How can they meet their mortgages? How can they buy groceries? How, what does this do to the economy more broadly? Well, it creates a backlog because there, there is some forgiveness, obviously, on rent payments and mortgages, particularly buying groceries, obviously not so. Um, the advice that I would give people is just add up all of these obligations while you're waiting for your check and just communicate with your landlord, communicate with whomever you possibly can and you know show your willingness to pay as you're waiting for your check. Groceries, that's a tough one. I don't have a magic wand answer for that. But the thing is, is that these checks should eventually come through as long as people are eligible. I think the uncertainty point is people don't always understand if they are eligible or not eligible. Um, and so then that becomes a problem because they plan for having the check and then they don't have the check. Um, it's my understanding that we are now $750 billion in backlogged principal payments nationwide for mortgages. And there are going to be winners and losers in that game, unfortunately. Some people will be able to make up their backlog payments and will survive and keep from being, you know, having a default situation. I do unfortunately expect a wave of defaults to come in the next six months or so as people are just cannot keep up with the backlog of this. And I think that that's highly unfortunate. And the stimulus that's being put into the system now is not efficiently reaching people. So we have to spend time solving that problem rather than thinking about what the problems are six months from now. And you know we should probably prepare for millions more unemployment, uh, unemployed Americans to enter the system as well next week. Is there any hope of doing away with the backlog of these unprocessed claims and at the same time handle millions of new ones? How do you make that work? Yeah, I mean, where new technology can be implemented now, I think that there's reason for having funding for that. Um, unfortunately, the wave has already started. So to the best of anyone's ability, I think you just have to keep moving through the backlog. You just have to keep going forward and people just have to keep being as patient as possible. It's not an ideal situation. The thing that's very interesting is, you know, you've got your um, CARE, you know, you've got your CARES Act stimulus check versus your unemployment. Unemployment, of course, you have to qualify for. And so that may take a little bit longer than the CARES Act check. Some of the CARES Act checks have not gotten there yet either. That could be just because nobody's gotten a tax return from a direct deposit. The IRS has an old bank account. Trump is signing paper checks. You've got maybe no tax return filed previously. Um, you filed a paper tax return or um, you, the check is coming back to your tax pre preparation service. Um, actually, unfortunately, I think they've now made moves so that creditors cannot come in and um, garnish those checks out of bank accounts. Uh, but some people, I think, got their stimulus check and then it was garnished by creditors immediately. So there are some kinks yet to be worked out in the system. This legislation was pa passed at a record pace. And it's just hard to anticipate all of these variables when, as a nation, we really haven't seen this since arguably 1918 with the Spanish flu. It's just incredible to see, to have you say how long it's been since we've seen something like this, the mass unemployment payments not being able to be made. What kind of impact do you think this will have on the markets? So Main Street and Wall Street are completely disconnected. And I think it's never been more obvious than the stock market sort of floating up and up and up and up. And Main Street, I think things are getting more dire because 
the things that made the stock market go up, the record response from the Fed and the record response from Congress in putting these stimulus packages into pay place and backstopping market instruments so that there's liquidity and the transactions can go through, some of that is not working as efficiently as planned, and yet the market just continues higher and higher and higher. Well, on Main Street, because of these inefficiencies, I think the damage was underestimated. So one of the reasons the stock market goes up is they think that despite these record, you know, record bad numbers, economic uh, numbers coming in, they think that this has all been priced in. So they're being a little bit agnostic to the numbers. There will definitely be a reconciliation point between the two. Also, a lot of stimulus, particularly coming from the Fed, comes you know, in the way of loans, and there are only a certain number of people in circulation that can qualify for those loans. So it gets very concentrated, as some people complain, in asset prices, which are only available really to the top 40% of Americans. And before we went into this crisis, we had a massive divide between the upper 40% of Americans as far as income and wealth and the lower 60%. And statistically, um, the lower 60% were in some ways already living in third world conditions. I know that sounds alarming, but access to clean water, clean food, education, health care, um, you know, life expectancy, the probability of having an opioid problem is so divergent between the upper 40% and the lower 60%. And it is because of this money that's coming in via you know, the current laws that we have. And I would argue that the Fed has even stretched those laws a bit really hits the upper 40% before the lower 60%. So now you have the CARES Act to deliberately get that to the lower 60%, and you have the unemployment insurance deliberately to address the lower 60%. And as we're seeing, there are some inefficiencies in the system. And so that's going to delay that. What's going to happen moving forward is that you're going to have an increase, unfortunately, in the wealth gap because of COVID, because COVID is exposing and exacerbating all of the pre-existing problems that we went into this crisis with. You're absolutely right. And people can certainly feel that the divide and in income inequality even more apparent. Francis Stacey, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.